From the land down under, with the rock at its center, comes the little Aussie watchman. There's been a split in the pro-election truth movement. The two outsiders, Lyd Wood and David Clements, have actively disparaged Michael Flynn and Patrick Byrne. Both Lynn and David have excellent histories. Lynn Wood, a defamation lawyer with an impeccable past. David Clements, a law professor from New Mexico State University. They both recognised quite early on that the 2020 election was fraudulent. And both have lost work and reputation because of their singular desire to expose it. It was their clear commitment to the cause which makes them seemingly out of character attacks on other individuals in the election truth movement even more confusing. The particulars of Michael Flynn and Patrick Byrne are also very impressive. Michael Flynn severely suffered for his support of Trump, with the deep state setting him up, continually litigating against him, threatening his son and then bankrupting him. His realisation of the 2020 election fraud was early on and has worked tirelessly to combat it. Patrick Byrne has also done some heavy lifting to reverse the disaster which was the 2020 election. All others in the election integrity movement have been forced to take sides. Sitting on the fence doesn't seem to have been an option. From those who have been following along, things seem to have been brewing for about two to three months. In order to follow the drama, we start in early November on Lynn Wood's Telegram channel, where Lynn compliments Flynn, but questions his support of Vernon Jones, a figure that Lynn believes is only in politics to lie in his own pockets. 4th of November, he goes even further to say that he rang General Flynn to let him know that he would miss seeing him at an upcoming conference arranged by Doug Billings. It is also interesting that General Flynn's endorsement of Vernon, Jam- Vernon Jones seems to have disappeared from his website on the 6th of November, a day that also sees Linwood talk about a subject that has given him the uh, label conspiracy theorist or wacky, that is child sex trafficking and sacrifice in satanic rituals. On this day, he also talks about the Rittenhouse controversy prior to it exploding on Tucker Carlson's interview with uh, Kyle. He mentions how his organisation, Fight Back, posted $2 million to Rittenhouse's cash bail. And there was something fishy going on with David Hancock, who took over the fundraising efforts, including a surreptitious trip to Lynn's house under false pretenses to try and set him up and record him without his knowledge. David Hancock also stole the donor list for Kyle from Fight Back. We find out later that David, an ex-Navy SEAL, had his trident pulled because of fraud related to creation and running of a charity for deceased Navy SEALs. Lynn Wood alleges he is a CIA deep state operative on the 14th of November. That day, Lynn accuses Hancock of concocting a story that he had stolen money from Kyle and Wendy. On the 15th, Of November, Lynn brings up another player, Marjorie Taylor Greene. He also believes that she has deep state connections. 20th of November sees Kyle Rittenhouse judged innocent. The 21st starts a whirlwind of accusations with Mark Richards, Kyle's attorney, accusing Lynn of being an idiot and trying to make money out of Kyle Rittenhouse. Lies that Lynn believes came from David Hancock. He claims he made no money whatsoever and in fact paid more money to Kyle's cause than he ever received in donations and says that he has the receipts and the records that prove it. Lynn writes a letter to Mark Richards telling him that if he does not retract the lies, he will be sued. On the 22nd of November, Lynn calls out David A. Clark as a potential deep state plant for lying about who should get the bail money that Fightback put up to keep Kyle Rittenhouse out of jail. On the 23rd, Lynn publicly comments as to why Fightback's involvement in bailing out Kyle is never mentioned by patriots such as General Flynn or Kyle Rittenhouse. Brian Cates is also given a shout-out about his false statements in regard to Lynn stealing from Carl and Wendy. The 23rd is also a day Carl Rittenhouse claimed on Tucker Carlson that Lynn would try to keep him in jail. This particular claim is insane, as only the judge can decide how long someone is in prison, and only his lawyer can convince the judge to change this. And Lynn Wood was not Carl's lawyer, or his judge. None of this makes any sense. Except if you realise that the poor boy has had his brain poisoned by John Pierce and David Hancock. Wendy Rogers also stands up for Lynn, claiming there is no way that Carl's claim is true. David Clements also repeats the obvious. Lynn Wood was neither Carl's attorney nor judge and therefore had no role in him being in jail. On the 24th of November, another bombshell. Lynn Wood publicly addresses Sydney for her silence on the matter. 
He also points to other issues regarding his name being used on complaints unethically, an invest investigation into an organisation defundtherepublic.org, and some multi-million dollar dispute with General Flynn. These are all bombshell claims. Personally, I respect Sydney and would be surprised if there any is there anything nefarious in her character. But wow. That concludes part one of our investigation into the great split of the 2020 truth movement. Seems obvious that Kyle Rittenhouse has been set up to voice easily disproven lies. However, Lynn has been known to voice outrageous opinions, and his attacks on Marjorie Taylor Greene and Sidney Powell are unsettling. Whether all this is feigned to keep the deep state unbalanced, or whether it is a deliberate attempt by the deep state to plant lies and divide the truth movement, is hard to tell.